follow a proven process that's been proven to work for a large group of people, as long as you do that for an extended period of time or do it for long enough, you will succeed. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. I've helped create more success stories on YouTube for real estate than anybody else in the industry in terms of channels that have built massive momentum and be able to lead to consistent closed deals on a monthly basis with clients coming directly to you. However, one of the things I see is so many people are now talking about YouTube for real estate agents, but nobody's breaking down the reality of what it takes and the expectations that you need to have in order to see success as a real estate agent with a YouTube channel. So I'm going to break down five things that you need to know if you do want to build a thriving YouTube channel where clients do come to you on autopilot 24 7 365 from your free YouTube videos. It's very possible. I've done it time and time again across all types of agents, levels of experience, different states, countries, everything. But you need to understand these five things. Otherwise, you could be like many agents that are putting out content only to get no views, no clients reaching out and to get burnt out and disappointed with the results. So let's dive into the five things that you need to understand if you want to build a thriving, successful, and highly profitable YouTube channel. Okay, so part number one, starting off, I want to frame this with a bit of expectations, which I'll dive in deeper on part number two, but let me overlay an image here that's gonna break down one of the success stories that many people talk about that I helped create, which is Suman Kim. Did 87 deals in his first year, 67 million in production, over 114 deals and almost two and a half million in GCI in his second year with no prospecting, no ad spend. It was entirely from this YouTube channel, but what you're gonna see here on the graph that's shown is something that nobody's talking about. Because when you hear 87 deals in your first year, the average agent is making the assumption that that was 87 deals divided by 12 spread out equally where he must have put out this first video and clients started coming to him consistently every single month. But that is not the case. Looking at this graph, what you're gonna see is his analytics from year one, where Suman put out his first video December 20th of 2020. So what you're gonna see with his graph in 2021 is that from January 1st to about July 1st, there was no momentum. What happened in July was one of his videos finally connected, it blew up, it started to get people aware of his channel, and the majority of those 87 deals came in the second half or the second six months of his first year. So what I really want you to understand is that this is a delayed gratification approach where it's kind of like that you know meme that everybody's familiar with in terms of the person digging for the diamond and one turns away right before they hit the diamond and the other continues to follow through, push forward and reach is the diamond. Well, what happens if Suman, like most agents, ended up quitting after three months of putting out content, four months of putting out content, five months of putting out content and not getting the results he was expecting, those 87 deals never would have happened. So what I want you to understand is that Suman also never asked the question, Mike, how long will it take for me to get a client if I follow this proven process? Because I gave him the proven process, Suman partnered with me at EXP and I said, hey, do these exact videos in this exact order and you will probably build momentum like many others have that have helped. And he did it, but he never asked how long will it take to get a client? He never asked how long will it take to get a lead? How long should I do this for? He just followed a proven process process. And if you want that proven process, just comment below and I'll give you my entire video blueprint process. But it's really important to understand that graph where you have to be consistent for an extended period of time, because more often than not, people are quitting right before they hit the inflection point. What you need to understand is that prospecting and lead generation is a linear curve. It is straight. It's a line. It's Money in equals leads out. Time in equals leads out if you're prospecting or spending ads. With organic content that is SEO driven like YouTube, it is exponential. It starts off very slow, it hits an inflection point, and then it skyrockets. Well, all too many people give up during that slow building phase to the point where they never reach the inflection point and then it never takes off. So what you need to understand is a couple different things, which I'm going to break down in terms of managing expectations, which is part two. Okay, so managing expectations. Let me break down a few things. It all comes down to mindset. So when you go into an activity like this, that again, I've proven this works across all types of agents and all types of markets, good, bad, ugly, different types of styles of properties, the whole nine yards. 
it is a proven process. If you follow a proven process that's been proven to work for a large group of people, as long as you do that for an extended period of time or do it for long enough, you will succeed. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. The one that wins is the one that can extend the time horizon for which they're expecting tangible results for the furthest. Because here's where people go wrong is they have unrealistic expectations. So they say, I'm going to do this for three months. And if I don't get a client in three months and it doesn't work or it's not for me, well, they do it for three months. They don't get a client and they give up and they go to TikTok or something else. Well, when you start looking at this, if you just set your expectation and said, hey, I'm going to do it for a year and I don't care when I get results. All that I care about is making improvements video after video. Well, do you think after three months you'd care if you didn't get a client? You set your expectations at 12 months, not three. Now go a step further, extend it to 10 years and say, I'm going to do this for the rest of my career because it's proven to work. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. I'm going to do this for the next 10 years. Do you think after three months you would care whatsoever if you didn't get a client? No, because three months out of 10 years is nothing. So when you can extend your time horizon for which you're expecting to see tangible results, it makes your commitment level so much deeper and it doesn't lead to this false expectation and disappointment because yes, have I helped people get 120K GCI from their very first video? Yes. Have I helped people get clients close deals in their first month? Yes, but that's not every time. So don't compare yourself. And also managing expectations comes down to number one, if it's not in your calendar, it's not a priority. And there's so many people that say, well, I don't have time for content or I don't have time. You will always make time for your priorities. Let me explain. Let's say, you know, you're sitting here on a Saturday afternoon and you've got 12 showings this evening. Well, if you feel like you're going to have a heart attack, do you think you're going to go do your showings or do you think you're going to go to the hospital because you might lose your life? You're probably going to go to the hospital and cancel all your showings because your health and your life is a priority. Even though you had all this stuff planned, you canceled it all because it was a priority. You will always make time for your priorities. And if you're not making time for content and setting the right expectations, you're just saying, you're telling yourself and everybody else that this is not a priority, but it needs to be because it's the number one way to build mass momentum, scale and create leverage of your time because it's SEO driven evergreen content. So you have to make sure that it's in your calendar as a non-negotiable every single week as a top priority to make sure you're consistent. Also, the difference between two videos a week and one video a week is more than a two time multiple. So let's look at followers and let's look at subscribers and the vanity metrics before I go on into return on investment, which is a common question people have. When we look at the vanity metrics, people aren't getting as many views or aren't getting as many subscribers. Well, I'm get to that in the end about why that's the case, but you have to understand that let's say you're putting out one video a week and you're not building the momentum that you would like. Well, put out two videos a week because now you're going to get two years worth of momentum condensed into one. When you can start to condense time and be more consistent and increase the frequency, you're increasing the speed of the results. So it's really important to understand that simple concept. But now let's look at managing expectations in terms of ROI or ROTI, return on investment, return on time investment. There's so many people that will say, Mike, how do I look at the return on free content I don't know how I'm putting out this content. When is it going to get me a client? What you need to understand is again, look at the top agents in your market that have these big billboards hanging out by the highway. Do you think they can calculate the return on that investment? No, it's impossible. But over time with brand awareness and with staying top of mind and with enough touch points, you will start to get clients that remember you can find you and will work with you. Well, the beautiful part about evergreen content like YouTube is that it's basically a billboard 24 seven, 365 that is scalable globally, regardless of which route the people decide to drive home with. Right? So when you start looking at this, you need to manage the right expectations for when you're expecting to get results and what those results should look like, because the biggest success stories are going to be the ones that are understanding the intangible progress of getting better, delivering a clear, concise, compelling message, and not the ones that are focused on how quickly can I get a lead? Part number three is going to be being a student of the platform. This is incredibly important and watching and consuming content to educate, not just to entertain. 
entertain. So, so many people are watching content just for entertainment purposes, but not using it as an educational opportunity to see why did I click on that thumbnail or why did I click on that title? Why did I stay to the end of this video? What did they say that made me stay to the end, right? Let's look at sports. For example, let's say you want to get into the NBA. You've got two different options and you can tell me which one that you think would lead to better results. You want to get into the NBA. Option number one, you're going to go study Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, all the big players, and you're going to look at what, how they perform, how they shoot, how they do free throws, all the different moves that they have, and you're going to study religiously because they're the best of the best. Or you can go watch football, watch Netflix, hang out, go drink, do whatever you want, and study everything except for that game. Well, what do you think is going to get better results? Probably the one that's a student of the game. So if you want to get a good on YouTube, start consuming YouTube content and see how do you interact on YouTube? What are you searching for? How do you click on thumbnails? Why do you click on them? Instead of just saying, hey, I want to be great at YouTube, but I want to spend my time on Netflix. Well, those are two different platforms with two different audiences. You're not going to get very good if you're studying a completely different platform. You have to be a student of the game. Number four is going to be learning to optimize. My free training, if you comment below, will give you this. But if you don't understand how to optimize your content, you're going to be very hard pressed to get incredible results because you need to understand how to do a proper thumbnail. You need to understand proper titles. But so many people skip out on the tags in their videos. They don't do proper call to actions in their videos and they don't have things in their description that will actually drive consistent leads. So you need to make sure that you optimize your content in order to rank your videos, whatever people are searching for your local market. But that leads into number five, which is the most important one. You have to take an unbiased, unattached approach. I've got a full video on this. And if you want to drop a comment and I'll send it to you, but this is what changed my life. So what I want you to do is three simple litmus tests every single time you do a video. And if you do this, your videos will explode and you will get consistent clients from your YouTube content. Litmus test number one, every time you design a thumbnail, let's say your video is about, you know, the five reasons to move to Austin, Texas. Well, go to YouTube, type in reasons to move to Austin, Texas, and take your thumbnail and put it beside each of the top three ranking thumbnails currently on YouTube and ask yourself unbiasedly. And if you're not able to be unbiased, which is a muscle that takes time to develop, go ask a friend that will be honest with you and say, Hey, John, which one of these would you click on mine or any of these top three? And if you or John would go click on any of the top three other than your thumbnail, well, guess what? So will everybody else. Just because you designed it doesn't mean that people should click on it. Then you go a step further, watch those three videos and then watch your video and say, based on watching those three videos and then watching my video, were theirs more valuable, entertaining, educational, and informative? And were they more exciting to watch or was mine? Well, chances are theirs are probably going to be a bit more exciting, which is why they're ranking higher. So you need to get better at delivery. And the final test, which nobody talks about, and this honestly is a crazy ninja trick that nobody again has ever shared on YouTube that has made the difference of my optimization, which is take a screenshot of your tags, put it on a different window on your desktop or on your laptop or whatever, and then look at that or give that screenshot to a friend and say, Hey, Sarah, can you tell me exactly what my video is about by looking at these tags, which market it's for what the video is about exactly what it's about. You've not showed Sarah the title, the description or the thumbnail. All that you did was give her the tags. If she can tell you exactly what your video is about based on the tags, your video is optimized. If she can't tell you what your video is about because you're using generic tags like realtor houses, mortgage rates, real estate. Well, you've got to get back to the drawing board. So those are the five things that really make a difference of setting proper expectations, understanding the mindset that you need to have to thrive on YouTube, because this can completely change your business forever, but you need to go in with the right mentality. If you have any other questions, drop a comment below. Otherwise I can't wait to see your content continue to improve.